Ten years ago today, we were both in the service mission support area at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, landing the Opportunity rover. My role was uh, as mobility system mechanical engineer uh, on both Spirit and Opportunity. I was a system engineer all throughout development and uh, during landing night and uh, for the first part of the mission I was flight director. I designed the support system and the, the engine block, for lack of a better term, uh, of the rover. Uh, I then transitioned into uh, the assembly test and launch operations phase where uh, I was in charge of uh, integrating uh, the Opportunity rover. Uh, and, and, and participated in the build of lots of uh, the elements of the spacecraft. But until Opportunity's landing, all of the landing sites that anyone had seen looked like a rock-strewn plain, uh, desert plain of red rock um, and uh, light red sand, and everyone kind of had that perception of what Mars looked like. When Spirit landed, uh, and uh, the first images popped up. Everybody was, of course, elated and excited. Uh, but it looked like Mars, uh, for lack of a better way well, of saying so it. There's a, there's a little sub-note here. The very first pictures taken on Mars by both rovers were pictures of hardware you designed. Yeah, that's true. And on the landing night, uh, when the very first images uh, were put up of Opportunity's uh, engineering cameras as they looked down the mast and across the deck and they were looking into the distance, the landscape looked completely different. The, uh, the general uh, land was f almost featureless and super dark, uh, and then there was this strange white uh, kind of outcropping, uh, as we learned later, um, that, uh, that was a part of Eagle Crater. We first started taking navigational pictures and, and, and the rear has cams. It looked like we expected Mars to look, you know, from uh, Pathfinder and from Viking. Uh, it was kind of the same environment. When it happened for opportunity and the pictures were taken, everybody was thoroughly confused. When that image got put up in the room, everyone who had been so excited about the images, they all fell silent because they didn't know what they were looking at. The entire world's brain trust for Mars exploration and scientific investigation was in that room at Dumb, that point. Dumbfounded. They had no idea what we were looking at. Yeah. And uh, that was a, a, an electric experience because it was not just the fact that it had happened. <clears throat> and it was successful and everything had worked, uh, it was that we had landed in a place that was completely alien. I remember uh, with the other people on the team uh, making a bet on which way Opportunity would land. And I had, I had guessed the back pedal, which was called the plus Y pedal. And the other team members had bet on other, other land competitors. And uh, this is one of the first signals we got when it touched down. And uh, I won. And I was momentarily very excited that I had won the bet. <laughs> And then I realized, oh, that was the algorithm I tested. I really hope that that works. <laughs> I would say, without question, the singular achievement is that it is still going. Yes. Certainly very proud that, uh, you know, a type of thing that inspired me to, to get into space exploration, that we've now been able to contribute to that. Uh, all the people that we work with doing that, all the people that are still operating Opportunity and now Curiosity, uh, even today. To have watched the, some of the best people in the world and to have participated as a part of that team in making that happen and watch the giant challenge be broken up into manageable bites uh, prioritized, managed, and tested all throughout. Um, to, to be a part of that, I think, has kind of prepared us for the seemingly impossible uh, goal of asteroid prospecting and asteroid mining.